all of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is, TG Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. Allegations for underground play tunnels used for secretive gatherings and illicit activities have come out, with Diddy's assistant playing a central role in exposing these activities. As his former assistant during the time that he began dating Cassie Ventura, the singer, uh, and I should note, you became his assistant as a part of, of the, the reality show to, to work for him. I did. Everyone remembers watching that. I, I mean, to, well, first, just, I mean, what is it like for you to see this video that came out today? I, I, I felt sick and I felt violently angry and I felt like I'm sure a lot of men and women uh, feel looking at that video that it's so disturbing that the video doesn't lie. I mean, you know, when I watched it, what stood out to me initially after Elizabeth Wagmeister got it was she's barefoot in the beginning. And it's like she was so quickly running out of the room to get to, to the elevator that she didn't even put her shoes on yet. I mean, that's terror. That's what you would do if there was a fire, right? You would just run out, grab what you could. So I can only imagine looking at that, the fear that she felt she had to get out of that room in bare feet in order to be safe or protect herself. I mean, you worked closely with him. I did. I was his assistant between 2008 and 2009, and they were dating when I worked for him. And what was, well, what was he like, and what were, what did you observe about them at this time? I observed nothing that would lead me to believe, or I, there was no scuttlebutt about it. I never saw him speak harshly to her or be abusive toward her or anything like that. I rode in the limos with them. I went to parties with them. Um, I guess what I would say is, even though I never saw anything that could corroborate what's in that lawsuit and what we just saw, there was not one cell in my body that was surprised. Why not? You know, it's gonna sound a little bit weird because I don't have any facts, right? And nobody's gonna call me to testify. But I would say that it's woman's intuition. I would say that I was around him a lot, and I got a feeling for who he was. I didn't see anything um, that could get him in trouble. But I think that the, the power dynamic in a situation like that, especially her at the beginning of her career, so young and beautiful and talented, and she hooked herself or became involved with somebody who had so much power, and I felt that working for him. I'm sure the whole team felt that. And I mean, that's right, he's a mogul. So of course he's the big boss. But I think that you could imagine, certainly in my interactions with him, you could imagine how that would dissipate and, and sort of seep into every aspect of his life and especially his relationships. Yeah, because I mean, she was 19, I believe, and he was 37 when they first began dating. Right, so imagine how that would be and then he's rich and not only is he rich, but he controls your career. And all you want in your career, right, is she's an artist, she wants to make music. She really was an artist, is an artist. And now all of a sudden, she's with somebody who could make that happen for her and it doesn't happen. So you don't, you don't, it wasn't anything specific. You just, you got a strange, uncomfortable feeling from him? I mean, or? it was, I think it's more to do with the way that he treated people. Again, nobody was mistreated that I saw. I didn't feel mistreated, but it was very clear to me. Again, this is intuition, right? This is what we pick up as women and mm -hmm. humans who are smart and have been around. He just didn't see your humanity when he looked at you. I felt, it felt very obvious to me that everyone was just sort of there to be used, that he can get the most out of you. Keep your friends close and your assistant closer. Tunnels were allegedly used to host exclusive parties featuring celebrities. If Bishop Jakes was at a Diddy party, there could only be two reasons, money or sex. That's all that happens at Diddy parties. I, do. I hope it was for money. The drama really kicked off with surveillance footage released by CNN showing comms grabbing, shoving, and kicking Cassie in 2016. This matched her allegations in a now-settled lawsuit filed last November. Things got interesting because Combs's ex, her name was Cassandra, she went by Cassie, and she filed a federal lawsuit against him in New York alleging years of assaults. Now, again, they dated for like more than 10 years, so she obviously was very close to him and knew his lifestyle. 
Her lawsuit contained graphic allegations that he raped her in 2018, that he physically abused her, that he intimidated her, that he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched. The lawsuit also alleged that he blew up another artist's car, his name was Kid Cudi, in order to stop him from seeing Cassie rom romantically when him and Cassie split up. I mean, again, all of this sounds insane if it's true. Well, Kid Cudi thought the accusations were true. He said, yes, that is factually what happened. But of course, Diddy denied those allegations. And he instead came out and said that Cassie was simply trying to blackmail him for $30 million. And by the way, that is plausible, right? We've seen tons of those instances, especially in the era of Me Too. What did you know back then, three, that four Cassie years was ago? was gonna come forward. So what What did you, how'd you know, what did you know about what Cat? Because to, to hear I the- I could explain. Yeah, but- um, but if I explain how I knew Cassie was gonna come forward, that could hurt some people. I don't spend time around Cassie and I haven't seen Cassie in person since she was with Ryan Leslie. Was there something in her eyes that you saw the way, like now I'm gonna that- I'm put it to you this way, there are mutual acquaintances between her and I. Mm. And that's as far as I can go. Okay. Do you think she was the only one getting banged by him? Do you think this man had this woman search for prostitutes online just for them to have sex with her is something fishy about that bro because you got to realize this lawsuit and the information they had and they gave the diddy people was six months ago so some of that stuff was cut out we're going to give you this but you got to cut this part out let's just say allegedly just for the sake of it cassie wasn't the only one who wanted or she didn't want it but Cassie who searched for the big black and she was searching for the big black, not only for herself, but for somebody else who we all know that was in the room with her. So if he want to see it and he want her to suck, touch it, he might, that other person in the room with her just might want to feel it, allegedly. She said it's a freak off session. If she says a freak off section, brother, she ain't the only one freaking off. The prostitute ain't the only one freaking off. Oh boy is freaking off also. I think that, and, and me just being a trained investigator and reading through the lines of certain things. And one time I had read something that Cassie couldn't take it no more. She told her friend, and this was she, she was under a non-disclosure and everything like that. She told her friend she couldn't take it no more because she had seen this dude do something. I've heard plenty of stories about him being on a, that same yacht that Kim was on and the same yacht she got her nose broken on that somebody was doing something when she, to him when they walked in the room and it caused a confrontation. This is what somebody who was on the yacht said to me. My whole thing about it was this. Anything in that lawsuit, you got to realize that we only got a portion of it because it's been chopped up. Things has been taken out. So somebody would look a certain way. Cassie may have seen some stuff that she ain't really want to look at. He didn't want her to know who they were. So if she ever wanted to do what she just did, how does she say who the hell a person look? All she could describe is they, if they was wearing masks, unless she saw them before they put the mask on. All these stories has been around the industry for a long time. All these industry people know that Diddy been acting like this and doing this and try to engage other men into sexual acts with him. There was a story that he was trying to get Chris Brown, those young boys that he had, a group B5 or something like that, trying to get them. Yo, it's a lot of stories that goes around in this industry about not just him, other people. Jimmy Iovine, ain't nobody talking about Jimmy Iovine. He got sexual charges and everything on him, but he got those publicists that's keeping it out off of CNN, is keeping it off the major news uh, uh, reports. Cassie at the start of her career was young, beautiful, and talented, essentially a perfect recipe for power imbalance. Since Ventura's lawsuit, more people have come forward with accusations against comms. This person, however, his name is Rodney Jones. He lived, traveled, and he worked with Diddy as a producer, and he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage and pictorial evidence, which has been included in this document, 
to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Now, to be clear, Rodney, also goes by Lil Rod, uh, is suing Diddy and others, we're gonna get to who those others are, for $30 million, claiming that he was subjected to sexual misconduct for the duration of the production process of an album. It is a 70-page lawsuit that has been filed in the Southern District of New York. And he is claiming that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, Florida, other locations, that Diddy repeatedly groped him, touching his, I'm sorry to say this guys, his anus and his crotch without consent and attempting to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship by showing him explicit videos of others in Hollywood. Yes, they have named other artists claiming that homosexuality was a normal practice in the music industry. It's also claiming that Diddy would walk around the house naked and force him to watch him shower. Hello, everyone. Um, until further notice, I would not be performing at any gigs or anything like that. Um, for security reasons, my family, friends, and everyone close to me just feels like there's a lot of potential threats and everybody's just telling me what he's allegedly capable of. And, you know, it's very scary um, for myself and, you know, it has me worried about my kids and, you know, just sleeping with anxiety and, and different things like that. So just moving forward, um, just gonna pause on everything until we know that it's, it's, it's clear and safe for me to come back outside of work. I appreciate um, you all for your love and support and everybody that knows me, etc. Thank you so much. Love. On May 21st, model Crystal McKinney filed her lawsuit against Sean Combs, Bad Boy Entertainment Holdings, Sean John Clothing LLC, and Universal Music Entertainment Group. And the statute says that it revives any claims against, quote, a party who commits, directs, enables, we'll talk about that, participates in or conspires in the commission of a crime of violence gen motivated by gender, has a cause of action against such party in any court of competent jurisdiction. It explains that when she was 17 years old back in 1998, McKinney won MTV's first model mission competition. She was given a modeling contract and her career started to take off with her appearing in all sorts of major magazines. And then in 2003, when she was 22 years old, McKinney says she was invited to attend a men's fashion week event being held in New York. Now, the person who invited McKinney is only referred to in the filing as the designer. But according to McKinney, quote, the designer told plaintiff that he would be introducing her to Combs, which could advance her modeling career. The designer began to direct plaintiff's appearance as he sought to ensure Combs found her attractive. The designer then handpicked a black leather coat with a fur hood, a translucent chiffon, beige V-cut shirt, fur-lined handbag and jewel-encrusted jeans for plaintiff to wear to the event. Due to the traumatic events to occur later, plaintiff saved the unwashed clothing from that night in her closet where they remain in a plastic wrap. Wow. Then he said he had the power to help her career, continued to be very flirtatious. He also allegedly kept plying her with alcohol. And at the end of the night or the end of the dinner, he allegedly told her he wants to get to know her better. McKinney says she accepted her first hit of marijuana, but now believes it was laced with some other narcotic. McKinney claims that Combs then led her to a bathroom where he allegedly forced her to perform oral sex on him, despite her saying no. Quote, upon standing and walking, plaintiff felt more and more woozy and then lost consciousness. Plaintiff awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment. The lawsuit says that after the alleged assault, McKinney didn't get as much work in modeling or acting. Eventually, she couldn't get any work at all. Upon information and belief, Combs had plaintiff blackballed in the industry and utilized his significant influence to impede plaintiff's career growth. Plaintiff became severely depressed as she began to blame herself for the assault and for sabotaging her own career. The assault led plaintiff into a tailspin of anxiety and depression. In or about 2004, plaintiff attempted suicide and was hospitalized. McKinney also states that she was married from 2006 to 2010, but according to her, her relationship fell apart because she had a mental breakdown connected to this traumatic experience. And this all goes, by the way, to the harm element of a lawsuit. What did you suffer? What are you seeking? 
McKinney's lawyers state in the complaint, quote, as a direct and proximate result of the aforementioned crime of violence and gender motivated violence, plaintiff has sustained and will continue to sustain monetary damages, physical injury, pain and suffering, and serious psychological and emotional distress, entitling her to an award of compensatory and punitive damages, injunctive and declaratory relief, attorney's fees and costs, and other remedies as this court may deem appropriate. When she met Mr. Combs, Ms. Lampro shared with him her dreams of working in the fashion industry. And Mr. Combs promised to mentor her and help her by introducing her to music and fashion industry executives, as well as assisting her with finding work. Mr. Combs love bombed her. He showered her with gifts and flowers as evidenced by one of the cards that accompanied the flowers that Mr. Combs sent Ms. Lampros for Valentine's Day in 1994. A photo of the card from the New York florist, The Daily Blossom, says, Happy Valentine's Day, love Puffy. Mr. Combs went so far as to invite Miss Lampros to his first Father's Day celebration, and a picture of that invitation was included in this complaint as well. Now, from there, the complaint says that what started out as a love-bombing, flirty relationship quickly went south. This is according to Lampros. Quote, Upon information and belief, what Mr. Combs displayed as kind gestures quickly manifested into an aggressive, coercive, and abusive relationship based on sex. These acts were not isolated to the state of New York as Mr. Combs would fly Miss Lampros to Atlanta to see him, where they would spend time together. Miss Lampros would also fly to Miami to see Mr. Combs at his home. The filing includes two photos of Lampros purportedly at Combs' home in Florida. According to Ms. Lampros, Mr. Combs had a terrible temper and often threatened to harm her if she failed to do what he said, if he witnessed her talking to other men, or if she failed to take his phone calls. According to Ms. Lampros, she was also not allowed to talk about her relationship with Mr. Combs to anyone because he didn't want anyone to know he was seeing her because she is a white woman. Can't wait to have you guys next time on The Realm. But for now, bye-bye.